This will be a quick demo of the Horizon Cube, a new plugin in OpenDetect version 4.2 that will help you to extract much more geologic information from seismic data. To run this plugin you need a commercial license for OpenDetect and for the DIP steering plugin. Optionally this can then be extended with Well Correlation Panel plugin, that's a new plugin in 4.2, and the Sys plugin, which is now only for sequence stratigraphic interpretation. The creation of the horizons are now done in the Horizon Cube. Horizon Cube is defined here as a dense set of correlated 3D stratigraphic surfaces. Dense maybe every 4-8 milliseconds apart I will have a horizon. The keyword here is here is correlated. I'm not interested in just patches of horizons. I want to have fully grown horizons that I can use to correlate from one position in a volume to another position along geologically meaningful events. With such a cube I can go in many different directions. First and foremost I can build very detailed geologic models by just interpolating well data along these horizons I can create gamma ray cubes, porosity volumes, anything that I can extract from the well data. Therefore I can also go and improve seismic inversion methods because now I can create a low frequency model that is truly honoring the seismic response and thereby getting much more in information from the seismic data, the seismic inversion method, than what we do conventionally with interpolated low frequency models. Obviously I can also improve the sequence stratigraphy. We were able to do this in 2D quite well in version 4, but now we can truly do sequence stratigraphy in 3D. And then finally I can improve well correlations and for this we have generated this new well correlation panel. So the workflow for creating horizon cubes is as follows. We first create a steering cube so that we have at every sample position the local dip and azimuth. We then use this to auto track a number of anchor horizons but by just following this pre-calculated dip. This will become our framework number of uh, horizons that we will then fill in with uh, more of these horizons using the same dip steered auto tracking algorithm to create the horizon cube. So let's see how this is done in practice. We will start now by tracking a number of uh, horizons to create this framework for the horizon cube. Therefore we have this new tool, create horizons from a steering cube. What I need as input is a steering cube and if I have fault planes I can also include that. The algorithm will take into account the faults and it will stop against the faults. Now the only thing I have to do is create one seed position per horizon. I will just uh, click a few times to create a number of these uh, horizons and then we'll see how it goes. And now let, uh, let it run. We are tracking here about uh, 600,000 uh, traces and that is a volume of 385 square kilometers. I'm using a normal laptop and this will take uh, roughly less than one minute to uh, create these five horizons. Okay, there we are. We now have uh, tracked five horizons using the dip steering uh, volume only. And let's just have a look what we have actually created. See there's one fault here and I'll just display the fault plane here that we gave to the algorithm to take uh, into account. You can see the algorithm nicely uh, stopped against it. So this is the first one and you can see that it nicely follows the uh, event. There's a lot of uh, detail in, in this horizon. That's the uh, second one, third one, and even in this uh, difficult zone it managed to stay on track quite well. So now we have the framework.
Okay, the next step is then to infill the uh, intermediate horizon, then we get a horizon cube. So now we have horizons virtually everywhere. And then of course we can do all kind of things. For example, we can go into sequence stratigraphy and see whether we can understand the actual deposition. We have this horizon cube slider here and we can see how the system actually developed over geologic time. This of course is the base, basis of our uh, SIS plugin where you can do wheeler transforms using these stratigraphic services to flatten your seismic data and then see how the system prograded, retrograded and do a full system tracks interpretation. But now we can do this in 3D and that of course makes a huge difference. The system tracks interpretation is done in a similar way using the slider looking for different stacking patterns and it will look something like this. After you have performed it. So here we're looking at transgressions, high stands, low stands, falling stage, any way you have interpreted this. But as I said before, the real benefit of having this horizon cube, maybe not even in sequence stratigraphy, it's really in geologic model building. Because what we can do now is actually use the interpolated well data and create very detailed geologic models. Like for instance here I have gamma ray responses. I have a total of four wells in this case. And I've interpolated the gamma ray responses along these horizons to create this gamma volume. And this really honors the seismic. As you can see we have hard shales petering out. We have sand bodies and it really makes a lot of geologic sense. In a similar way we can create uh, impedance volumes and in that way improve impedance inversion by giving a low frequency model that is actually honoring the seismic data. And here we see such a uh, interpolated impedance volume after frequency filtering it. So this is a low cut uh, or low pass filter. We get a low frequency model that we can give to an inversion program and then we get a really detailed inverted resu uh, result. Now you have to compare this with a conventional inversion result which looks like this. Here we have given the inversion algorithm a low frequency model that was built just by interpolating between a top and a bottom horizon, the green and yellow horizons, and here we used all the horizons in the horizon cube. Same algorithm, the difference is the low frequency model. And you can see the detailed response that you get from this inversion. And then obviously you can follow up with more rock property prediction going beyond inversion into porosity, lithology predictions and so on. Okay, then the last thing of this demo is to give you a quick rundown of the new well correlation panel. The well correlation panel is uh, used to correlate uh, well logs and using the horizon cube uh, information to correlate markers from one well to another. You start by creating a random line through a number of wells that you would like to correlate and once you have done that you can start this well correlation panel plugin from here. The panel looks like this and it's a very interactive uh, panel, different view modes of uh, well logs, uh, stratigraphy, horizons, markers, everything can be updated on the fly. From here we can use again the horizon cube slider to use this for correlating across these different wells. So what we have shown you in this uh, demo is uh, an overview of the Horizon Cube which we think is really a step forward in extracting information from seismic data using a very dense set of correlated stratigraphic services. These are generated by tracking in a dipsteate volume and once you have a Horizon Cube 
you can then go into very detailed geologic model building you can improve seismic inversions by giving a better low frequency model you can improve sequence stratigraphy which can now be done in 3D to the Wheeler transforms and you can go into well correlation using this well correlation panel this is the end of this uh, demo